I want to welcome you all to the From Success to Significance book signing and event. The Grand Rapids Public Library is very honored to be participating in this event, and we're very, very glad to see you all here. I just want to talk logistics for a minute. Um, the bathrooms are outside of the doors to the left. There's two right outside the doors. There's some more back towards the front in the stairwells if you need to go do so. Um, I have tickets, parking tickets if you guys parked in the lot. I have green tickets that you'll need to collect from me prior to leaving in order to park for free. So you'll need to see me before leaving. Additionally, we are giving away two books at the end of the presentation. If you have not signed up for the raffle, please do so in a timely fashion. And in addition, there are surveys that I have over on that side of the room. If you guys could please fill out the surveys for us so we can continue to do events like this in the future, that would be great. I welcome you all. Thank you, Janessa. Janessa is a, um, an employee of the Public Library, and she's actually the chair of the African American Heritage Committee uh, that help us, helped us put this on tonight. So please give her a round of applause. Um, we would also like to thank uh, Kristen Kruger Corrado, who is the uh, marketing and communications manager for the public, public library. And she initially reached out to me and uh, she offered us the space, Chris and I, the space to be able to do this tonight. So I want to definitely acknowledge her. And thank you to Jean. I don't see her in the audience right now, but Jean it works for the adult programming department here at the uh, public library. I also would like to thank Cherie Boss, who is in the back selling books for us. Cherie is a teacher um, at Kentwood Public Schools. And her little munchkin is back there too, Sydney Boss. Hi, Sydney. So thank you. And I also would like to thank my sister, who's also a teacher. She's kind of in the um, aisle right here taking pictures for me, so thank you all. Um, and thank you for being here tonight. Both Chris and I would like to thank you for being here tonight and purchasing um, our, our book. And we hope that you leave here inspired to dream big and to be a significant part of someone's life. So you all have received an agenda. We have a, a great lineup of speakers tonight. So they all come up here and tell you a little bit about themselves and tell you a little bit about how they've been touched by from success to significance, the eight keys to achieving any goal or dream. Through our publishing company, Morgan James, a portion of every book that is sold is donated to the Habitat for Humanity of Peninsula in Greater Williamsburg, Virginia. Chris and I both wanted to ensure that youth locally would also benefit from uh, these book sales. So in our first book signing, um, some of you were at the first book signing at Barnes & Noble, we donated a portion of the proceeds to our community's children, as well as Arbor Circle, which Chris is on the board of Arbor Circle. So tonight, we wanted to kind of continue that tradition, and a, a portion of the proceeds of the books that are being sold tonight will go to the Grand Rapids Public Schools and our community's children, of which I am a program coordinator of. So we have presentations, we have representatives from both our community's children and Grand Rapids Public Schools. So one of the two organizations that will be uh, the recipient of tonight's benefit is the Southeast Student Success Center of the Grand Rapids Public Schools under the leadership of Principal Chet Huff. Mr. Huff was born in Mississippi only a little while ago. Those were his words. He's a graduate of Central High School, um, 1968. Again, a little while ago, those are my words. He received a Bachelor of Arts degree from uh, the College of Emporia in Emporia, Kansas. He received a Master's degree in Education from Grand Valley State University. Mr. Huff is the proud father of four and the proud grandfather of seven. For the last 37 years, he's worked for the Grand Rapids Public Schools in various capacities. He's been a teacher, a basketball coach, an assistant principal, and currently the principal of the Southeast Student Success Center. Two quotes he's developed over the years that he instills in his students are, good people in the right place doing the right thing. And the other one is, I would rather see a sermon than hear one. Please welcome Mr. Huff. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Uh, only thing Ms. Harris forgot was it was the great state of Mississippi. <laughs> she, she forgot that. <laughs> that. And that's fine. That's fine. Uh, I have one minute to speak, but I think I'll take a little less than that, you know, because of the, for whatever reason. But uh, first of all, I would like to thank Ms. Hayden uh, for taking the initiative and in getting our school involved with this awesome endeavor. Okay. And, uh, I see that we have some of our staff members from Southeast uh, represented tonight, so I'm glad to see uh, those individuals come out tonight. And the students of Southeast has, has mentioned that they will also benefit from the uh, proceeds of this particular activity tonight. So I strongly encourage you to purchase a group, a copy of Mr. Mathis's book. It has a very powerful message and it comes from a very powerful person. You know, we had the opportunity to listen to him speak last week with our students and he did an awesome job. And if I told the kids there, uh, wouldn't anybody out of that room could not take something away from the message that he gave that particular day. So very powerful. So enjoy this evening's festivities and please purchase a copy of this wonderful book. And I thank you and the students of Southeast thank you as well. So have a very wonderful evening. Thank you, Mr. Huff. Now we have Glenda Bailey Hayden, a social worker with the Grand Rapids Public Schools. She works at the Southeast Student Success Center. Glenda is a native of New Orleans and a graduate of the New Orleans Public Schools. She earned her Bachelor of Arts degree from Dillard University, which is a historical black college and university located in New Orleans. She holds a Master of Arts degree in Clinical Child and Family Psychology from Michigan State University and a Master's of Social, in, of social Work in, um, from Grand Valley State University. Glenda has been instrumental in writing and receiving several grants to support innovative programs for students including the Student Media Project, Campus Cash, Campus Cash in the Class, Grand Rapids Public Schools Academic Games, and the Student Cultural Awareness and Stewardship Initiative. Currently, she is piloting the Southeast Student Success Center Leadership Academy in which participants are involved in a book study of From Success to Significance, The Eight Keys to Achieving Any Goal or Dream by Chris Mathis, who's in the back, by the way, with Shannon L. Harris, who's in the front, by the way. <laughs> Glenda aspires to empower students to be positive, uh, positive, self-directed contributors to their environment. Glenda will say a few words, followed by Monique Elliott, who is the district coach for the Grand Rapids Public Schools School-wide Positive Behavioral Interventions and Supports Initiative. Please welcome Ms. Glenda Hayden, and followed by Monique Elliott. Good evening. I would be remiss if I didn't take a second to acknowledge my colleagues as we celebrate National School Social Work Week. Would the school social workers who are present tonight please stand? Thank you. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to stand before you today to share with you how the students at Southeast Student Success Center have been inspired by From Success to Significance, The Eight Keys to Achieving Any Goal or Dream by Mr. Chris Mathis with Ms. Shannon L. Harris. But first, I would like to thank Principal Chester Huff and English teacher Ms. Hogram for supporting my vision of the Southeast Student Success Center Leadership Academy. The Leadership Academy consists of an eight-week book study in which students read a chapter on their own and then come together weekly during lunch to reflect on the assigned chapter. Students are encouraged to write their reflections on leaves, which are then posted on the Success to Significance tree. Some of their reflections are Chapter 1, Reality Check. You can do anything you set your mind to. Chapter 2, The Dream. I live my dream for me and no one else. Chapter three, it's possible to keep aiming for your goal no matter what position you are in. Chapter four, the struggle. Do not be impatient. If one step is all you make today, then celebrate that. Another student wrote, life will toss everything at you, but just keep striving forward. 
For our final session, we will tour Grand Rapids Community College and discuss Chapter 8 over lunch at the Heritage. Next, students will pay it forward by co-facilitating the next eight-week Leadership Academy, which is scheduled to begin after spring break. Last month, Mr. Mathis shared his story for the Black History Program. Since sharing his story, several students have already expressed interest in the next academy. During the past few weeks, we have observed growth in students' academic performance, relationships, and their confidence levels. Students who once presented as shy are not only sharing in sessions, but are also speaking in front of large audiences. I was inspired to do the book study because as an experienced professional, this book motivated me to conduct my own reality check and acknowledge my own dreams. This book is not just for students, but for anyone who desires to move beyond success to significance. Thank you. Hello, everyone. We are coming here for a very important ev event tonight. And, and what's really going to take place is that you are going to be able to listen to excellence. Someone who is actually doing what they've set their heart to do. And that's what you're seeing demonstrated right here before you. I work with Grand Rapids Public Schools, and I am your positive behavior intervention person for all your secondary buildings. And so, um, Southeast, I have to tell you how proud I am to be one of your mentors in that building. I'm excited. PBIS, what, what began to happen is in the district, we implemented PBIS, or Positive Behavior Interventions, with all of our middle and high school buildings last year. And we have seen so much progress um, happen with our students. And what begins to ha take place is all of our teachers and our staff members, they come together and they begin to um, honor our students for going over and beyond, doing those expectations um, that many times we just take for granted that our students are involved with. And so with this program, we are moving forward in Grand Rapids, we are excited about it and this is where many of our proceeds are going um, from the book sale tonight the initiative is powerful our students are on fire they they inspire us and I am proud and glad to be able to be a part of Southeast as well as Grand Rapids Public Schools thank you so much Thank you, Monique. Now, please welcome Lynn Heemstra, Executive Director of Our Communities Children, a public-private partnership between the City of Grand Rapids, the Grand Rapids Public Schools, and Community Partners. OCC advocates for public policy and facilitates programs for youth to prepare them for college, work, and life. OCC is the second recipient of tonight's benefit of which will help fund its leadership, civic engagement, and employment programs for youth. Lynn is also the product of the Grand Rapids Public Schools, Ottawa Hills High School to be specific, class of 19, I'll leave that alone, she's laughing up here, 19, blah, okay. So I'm also a graduate of Ottawa Hills High School and I won't tell you what, cl what class I was of either. So um, Lynn holds a Bachelor of Arts degree from Calvin College. She holds a Master's degree in Social Administration from Case Western. She's held the Executive Director position of Our Community's Children since its inception in 1998. Lynn has been instrumental in securing millions of dollars from local, state, and national funders to ensure children in Grand Rapids have access to quality after-school programs. Please welcome Lynn Heemstra to the podium. Thank you, Ms. Shannon. Isn't she wonderful? How about a hand for Ms. Shannon? 
our community's children uh, would have a hard time making things go if it weren't for Shannon Harris. She's been with the office for nine years now of the 15 that we've been in, it's 10 now? 10 years now of the 15 that we've been in existence and she's fabulous. She's talented and she's obviously a very good writer as evidenced in this book, uh, you know, and certainly with the author, Chris, I know they work very, very closely together in terms of making this the best book possible and to be of help to all who read it. So congratulations, Shannon, for this incredible um, project that you've accomplished. This has happened outside of her work at our community's children. We're dedicated to ensuring every child has access to quality after school programs that have access to the kinds of resources to be successful. So I know there's many young people here. If you are in grades nine through 12 and you wanna know what goes on at City Hall and work with the mayor, we've got a mayor's youth council. And we've got an event called Kids Speak that Shannon Harris organizes. We'd love to hear your voices um, speak out about education and what, what your experiences are. That's happening at the end of April. So we're hoping that you get involved in the life of the city because you definitely are leaders and we need you to be seen and heard at City Hall. That's what we're all about. We also want you to know that as an office, we're advocating to bring in dollars, to bring in resources, to make sure you have the programs you need. And that includes many programs, including youth employment. So again, Ms. Shannon is facilitating the LEAD program. And if you're looking for a job and you're age 15 to 21, We've got opportunities through the mayor's 50 businesses, and these are pretty amazing businesses that have stepped up to the plate to offer employment opportunities. Uh, we have one here in the audience now. We have express professionals who've stepped up the, the plate to offer a job experience that's paid. So I wanna thank both Chris and Shannon for giving us the opportunity to benefit from the sale of the book. Chris, congratulations to you for certainly practicing what you preach, for fulfilling your dreams, and for overcoming obstacles, being focused on what it takes to be successful. We really appreciate all that you do and all the help and assistance you've provided to the youth in our programs. And again, congratulations to Shannon for her amazing work and passion for the children in the city of Grand Rapids. Thank you. That was Lynn Heemstra. She's actually my boss. So she did a fabulous job, right? Fabulous job. Excellent. I'll be asking for that raise in the morning. Okay. <laughs> so with our, with an opportunity to host a second uh, book signing, Chrissy and I thought it would be the perfect venue of the library to not only celebrate literacy, but to also highlight the importance of hearing from young people. So tonight you'll hear from two amazing young people. First, starting with January David. January is a senior at Southeast Student Success Center. She's a native of New Jersey, right? Okay. Um, but at the age of seven, she moved to Grand Rapids. She's the proud mother of a six-year-old that attends Campus Elementary at Grand Rapids Public School. January enjoys reading, listening to music, and dancing. After graduating, January plans to attend Everest University to pursue a degree in the medical field. Please welcome January. Good evening. I am thankful for this opportunity to share with you my thoughts about from the success to the significance, the eight keys to achieving any goals or life dreams written by Mr. Chris Mathis and Shannon L. Harris. This book has taught me that we all have a gift. It's up to us to use our gift if we want that special something in life. Eight and to, that excite us to do what we love to do each and every day. 
In chapter one, the authors discuss three groups of people, winners, losers, and contenders. In one point of my life, I felt like the loser. I had given up on life. I, didn't, I refused to stand strong in difficult times. I didn't understand why fighting for my dream was worth it. I was my own obstacle to my success because I felt that I wasn't good enough. I didn't have hope nor believed in myself. And as a teen mom at the age of 13, I never thought that I would get far in life. But now I see my life differently. With the help of others and by reading this book, I understand now that I am a contender I have great ideas and great dreams and a passion to pursue them. I just have to take baby steps and believe in myself and I will achieve my dream. Everyone has a dream. Even people who yet don't know their dream has one. We have to dig deeper within ourselves to find that dream and to hold on to it. What we do with our dream is our choice. After reading this book, I have captured my dream and I am committed to achieving it. And not just for me, because I'm not alone. In my case, this is for us, my son and me. Thank you. That was awesome, wasn't it? Yeah. Another round of applause for January. Great job. So now our second book report comes from a 12th grade student at Wyoming High, David Wynn. So he's gonna be making his way up here as I talk about him, David. is not only a student, but he's also an intern with Our Community's Children a participant in its lead program and an employee of the library. He's a library page here. I believe he's also taking driver's training. Is that correct? So, you know, watch out for him on the road. <laughs> David plans, his plans for after high school are to attend college to study biology, to eventually become a neurosurgeon. So please welcome David as he shares his thoughts and feelings about from success to significance. I'm a senior at Wyoming High School, and I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself. I was born in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and raised in a two-parent household, along with two of my sisters, whom I love very much. My parents have always been supportive of my education. They're not demanding, but they inspire me to strive for excellence and to seek opportunities that will increase my knowledge and understanding of life. I also enjoy reading literature when I was given the opportunity to share my thoughts to you about this book, I was excited to do so in a way that makes us more alike than different. Yes, on the surface, I may be totally different from you. Everyone is unique, and it's the little quirks and habits that make us special. But how our similarities can bring us together leads me to why I'm here. Although Chris, Mathis, and I was raised in different life circumstances, from success to significant, convey exceptional key ingredients that everyone in this room could use in their life. I did. A few years back, there was a point in time when I struggled with something very personal. An old friend of mine decided to publicly disclose secrets that I told in confidence. Added with every single secret with a heavy coat of exaggeration, the rumors were crazy. It became increasingly difficult because people already assumed the worst of me. It was so unfortunate. I didn't like what was happening and simply, I didn't know what to do. 
You may be asking yourself, why is he telling me this story? Well, if you ever wondered the thought, why are you judging me when you don't know me? Then you understand how these questions in my personal story relate to being lost with no roadmap, a feeling so vividly described in, from success to significant, the A keys to achieving any goal or dream. When I read about Chris' struggles, I remember that my values and how I think about myself are rooted in my perspective of my circumstances, not in anybody else's perspective. Some people define their worth through their reputation. Others define their worth by their abilities. The better they are at something, the more value they believe they possess. They believe their value lies in their friends, coworkers, bosses, families, and friends, their perspective of them. When one defines their worth this way, one becomes powerless. This results in self-worth fluctuating according to what you do or what people think of you. You need to spend your days, you spend your days trying to please others. This process creates a never-ending cycle of anxiety and unhappiness. The way you break this cycle is to redefine your worth. There's only one of you on this planet, and that makes you alone, unique, rare, and extremely valuable. Self-worth doesn't fluctuate when you use your talents and gifts to help others succeed, thus making your life significant. This book helped me reawaken my self-worth by reminding myself that others' perspective shouldn't matter to me. I couldn't stop my friend from gossiping, but I eventually learned, but I eventually learned how to use one of life's unexpected roadblocks to fuel my actions towards a positive direction. To conclude, I highly recommend this book to other teens because it helps you discover or rediscover yourself and it helps motivate you to excel beyond what is expected. In some way, form, or fashion, everyone can relate to Chris's personal experience highlighted throughout this book. One phrase that I always remind myself is that it's possible, regardless of life's roadblocks, with motivation as my ally, I can do whatever is lingering in the back of my mind. Let me say it again. It's possible. David was a little nervous a couple of days ago, and I told him he would be fine. He did a great job, right? OK, so now it's my presentation. So preparing for tonight's presentation, I pondered just you know what I would say and what you all would want to know from me. And I wanted my message to be fresh, inspiring, cutting edge, to the point. So I decided that I will talk about myself. <laughs> So instead of a, a PowerPoint, I'm going to go a little old school on you guys. I've got some visual aids. Um, and so that would help me or help you all um, discover who I am, my positionality, if you will, uh, what influences my perspectives and how I think about life. So I'll start with the first visual aid. Can everybody see that? It's a little tiny sweatshirt. In the back has my name, Shan, on there. Now you probably are thinking that because it says Michigan State, I graduated from Michigan State. But actually, uh, my mother received her specialist degree from Michigan State after receiving her bachelor's from Bethune-Cookman and her master's from Florida A&M. My mother, which told me um, after seeing the footage from our first book signing, and I, you know, I gave her props. I said, my mom this and my mom that. She said, OK, the next time you have a book signing and it's taped, make sure you tell the people what my first and last name is. So my mother's first and last name is Ernestine Harris. So the camera, my mother's name is Ernestine Harris. So she's going to see this and appreciate that. So from an age that I can't even remember, uh, my mother instilled in both my sister and I uh, that receiving an education wasn't a choice, but rather a standard. This sweatshirt um, is actually uh, in my room. and. 
every now and again I look at it and I think, wow, that sweatshirt is cute. It's a little cute little sweatshirt and you know, I probably look cute in it when I wore it back in the day. But I also look at it and I think about the sacrifices that she made to ensure that we understood that to strive for excellence in all endeavors would be a tenet that would contribute to our success in life. Everything that my mother learned, she learned from her mother, my grandmother, Iris Jackson. My grandmother was a true, truly a trailblazer in every sense of the word. And speaking of the word is my second visual aid in my bag here. This is the Bible, okay? So this Bible is actually my sister's Bible. She doesn't know that I have it. <clears throat> so I have your Bible. I don't know where my sister is, right there. Okay, so this is her Bible um, that she received when she got baptized. We got baptized at the same time. But um, this is obviously a manual of how to live. So this book teaches me about faith. It teaches me to do unto others. This book is a constant reminder about the ultimate sacrifice that was made so that I may have hope and that I may have the ability to dream. So speaking of dreaming, it's my next visual aid. I have to put it on. Doesn't really fit, but um, can you read what it says? All that. <laughs> so this hat represents my college days. So I received a bachelor's of science in journalism from Florida a and University. And back in my college days, I probably wore this hat a little bit too much. Um, but I wore it as a representation of my confidence because I was all that because I studied hard. And um, I was figuring out what kind of a, an adult I wanted to be. And I was also all of that because I could always do the latest, you know, hip hop move, you know? And then switch it up and do a PK turn for those that know ballet terms, and then drop on a dime to do an African dance. So my next visual aid is, speaking of African dances, this African skirt. So this is a, this is a wraparound skirt, which my mother made. And this reminds me of how dance was an integral part of my life. So dance was my creative outlet, um, as well as a confidence booster. Um, I, I'm also a freelance dancer, or a freelance choreographer. And if um, I choreographed this presentation correctly, we would have a little music coming in right about, about <laughs> now. <laughs> You guys know the song, right? All right. <laughs> okay. So, my last visual aid is this racing bib, okay? So this represents um, my current accomplishment. My first 5K that I ran in was um, last year at the Fifth Third um, Riverbank Run. And I was kind of pondering, can I actually do this? I don't know. And then I knew if I said that I was going to do it, then I had to follow through. So um, I actually did it as a fundraiser for the Mayor's Youth Council last year. And I knew I could do it. Um, if I had confidence of myself. I knew I could do it if I prepared, and I knew I could do it if somebody else did it before me, which my sister is a runner. She runs all of these races. She was, she's not my running partner. She's too fast for me. But um, she did give me the encouragement and support to do it. So I can't say that this is a hobby, because I don't really like it that much. But um, I will frame it as this is a new goal. So my next race is next week, Saturday, next 5K. Um, I will compete in this race, and I use that term very, very loosely. And um, so yeah, so pray for me that I'll finish that. <laughs> So I say all of this to say, it would not have been, uh, I would not have the desire nor the ability to dream if those before me didn't lay the foundation. God, my grandmother, mother, father, sister, teachers, those who I work for, everyone that has come in, in my life has contributed to who I am today. Therefore, I am required to do unto others, I'm required to pay it forward, and I'm required to live my life with the same measure of significance that I was so afforded to experience through the lives of others. And in closing, when people um, 
talk about the book, and they asked me, well, how did you and Chris meet? So I was walking down the street, and um, you know, I just noticed that somebody was following me. And I turned around, and I saw this guy, and he had this black velvet jacket on, and this crisp white shirt, and these finger waves in his head. And I'm like, so yeah, what do you want? And he was like, oh, you know, can I get your autograph? Not really. So that's, that's, that's the other book. So if you want to know how Chris and I met, you have to read the book. So without further ado, are you ready to hear from Chris? Okay. I have to read this introduction of him that he prepared for me to read. So Chris Mathis was born and raised in Grand Rapids, Michigan. He's a class of 99 graduate from Grand Rapids Central High School. Chris has reached international prominent, prominence as a world-class motivational speaker and author of the best-selling book, From Success to Significance, The Eight Keys to Achieving Any Goal or Dream. Chris has shared his life-changing message with over 30,000 people in 67 countries through the power of this book, his videos, newsletters, blog, audio offerings, and live appearances. Chris has spoken to several organizations in Michigan, including Arbor Circle, Grand Valley State University, Our Community's Children, the annual Latino Youth Conference, Disability Advocates of King County, Muskegon Community College, Baker College, as well as high schools, colleges, and professional events. Chris has been featured in dozens of television and radio shows across the country. He is also the co-host of Power Talk Radio, which is an online radio show based out of New York. He also writes a weekly column for the Grand Rapids Times newspaper. Chris is most notably known for his ability to take his personal experiences and make them heartfelt and engaging. Chris uses profound truths coupled with anecdotal principles to motivate, inspire, and educate audiences on how to create a larger vision for their lives and how to teach others how to overcome their obstacles so they can achieve their goals and dreams. Chris's story of growing up in poverty, being homeless, and suffering a rare facial paralysis has changed the lives of many people all over the world. Please welcome Mr. Chris Mathis. Thank you. There's something else. <laughs> right. How's everybody doing? Good, good. Um, please give a round of applause for the students again. I mean, I sat, I sat at the back of the room and I was, I was beginning to tear up. I almost had to walk out of here. Listen to me because it's, it's, it's amazing for me to know that things that I went through, something that I created, something that I wrote, ideas and things that I, I've, I've learned over my years was able, was able to touch someone in that way. That, that's amazing. And it, it, it's, it's a very surreal feeling. It's very humbling to know that I was able to do something like that and make an impact. So I want to say thank you to the students. I also want to say thank you to Lynn and our community's children, uh, GRPS, Southeast Student Success Center, and of course, the one and only Shannon L. Harris. <laughs> so I do appreciate all of you for being a support to my message and helping me further my message uh, to help more people. Well, I guess we're getting started then. So to tell you a little bit about myself, I'm born and raised here in Grand Rapids. Uh, I grew up in a single parent household. My mother uh, was a single parent to my younger sister and myself and my father left when I was about four years old uh, due to life of drugs and crime. Um, this is the house that I grew up in. So for those of you that may have already read the book, here's a visual to connect with it. And um, you'll, if you've read the book already, you know the significance of this window uh, here in the middle. But for me, growing up in the inner city was a challenge. I mean, it was, it was, it was a large challenge for us. Um, to, to give you an idea of what life was like, um, our sleeping arrangements for a, a while, my mother, my younger sister, and I all shared one bed. Uh, it, was, it was a bunk bed that was missing the top bunk. Uh, it was a wooden frame with like a cotton layout and a wrap over the top of it. Uh, a breakfast for us would normally consist of like a half a bowl of soup, and my grandmother would take a sausage or a hot dog or something and cut it into quarters. And, and that's what we would serve for breakfast. Um, and, and we really didn't have much to work with, but they did the best with what we did have. Um, and, and so that is what, what life was like. It wasn't unusual for me to come out on any given morning to go to school and to see prostitutes on this corner, drug dealers on that corner, and the smell of gun smoke out front of my house. Uh, it, it wasn't unusual to find uh, used condoms laying around the side of the house or in the front of the steps. Uh, these things is what I, we began to consider normal 
I guess you can say, because it was the only way of life that we had known. We had never seen anything other than that. And, and I remember, you know, going through these situations and, and, and not having a father around to really support me or show me how to get ahead in life, it was a challenge. It was very challenging, and I'm very thankful that as I got older and I had some life experiences and things happen, I began to meet new mentors who saw beyond the rough exterior that I, was, was being shown. They saw something in me that I didn't even see in myself at that time in my life, and they were willing to help me to and, and motivate and inspire me and educate me even to become the person that you see today. So there's no way that I could have done all this by myself. Um, to, to get into this, this reason about this book, I, I, I wrote this book, switch the slide here. The reason I wrote this book was because I was working in corporate America. Uh, I had a very successful career in corporate America working in marketing. Uh, I actually worked for the third largest home improvement company in the country. I managed 25 locations across the nation. Uh, very successful, had made great money, got a chance to travel and did all these amazing things. And I remember I was leaving Las Vegas um, and I was there for a Floyd Mayweather fight. And, had a great time at the fight, and I get back home, and I get to my apartment, and then I realize that I'm alone. It's just me. And, and that's when the reality dawned on me that I hadn't done anything to help anyone or support anyone, and I had fell into this trap of, of greed and all about the money and, and how can we grow the company and, and not really how can I help others. And so in 2007, I began volunteering. And uh, my goal was really just to share with others how I had achieved my success. One of the questions that I got so often at that time in my life was, how did you do it? How did you go from being a, a young black male surrounded by drugs, gangs, and violence to being so successful in, in business and in life today? And so I wanted to just simply go back and just tell youth, here's what I did. Here's how I, how I achieved my goals. And I made my dreams become a reality for myself and, and those things. And, and then I connected with Lynn and with Shannon and that's when things kind of, I guess, exploded. You could say, I, I ended up speaking at a conference that Lynn invited me to and I received so much media attention. And, and from there, people began calling and inviting me in. And, and since then until now, I've touched a lot of people through the power of my message. And I've helped a lot of people. And to this day, I still volunteer my message. Every month, I volunteer uh, to dozens of nonprofits around the country. And so um, that, that is kind of how this book originally originated was from that concept of me just volunteering. And I remember I was in a meeting and uh, I was having a conversation with this gentleman and we were talking about, you know, the idea of me writing a book and he was telling me a story about his life and, and something that he said in that meeting that really stuck out to me made so much sense. He said, I realized that once I became successful, I had to move from success to significance. And when he said that, that, that really stuck with me and it resonated with me because I was at a point in my life where at a young age, I mean, it wasn't about the money for me anymore. It wasn't about the money at all. It wasn't about the vacations or the cars or the things that I could do. It was about how many people could I help? What would be the legacy that I leave when God says that my time is up? That is what I began to think about. And what I realized was I hadn't created one. I hadn't done anything to help anyone. And so I needed to make that transition from success to significance and really go back and give back to my community, starting here in Graphics before I go anywhere else. And that's what I did. And uh, I, I've been, I'm very thankful. And so to, let's get into these, uh, these ingredients in the book. You've heard some of the students mention, I know Shannon might have mentioned some of them up here as well. Um, the one that they mentioned in chapter one is called the reality check. You see, what I've learned in life, anytime that we attempt to go after a goal or dream, we must know who we are first. And what I mean by that is there's three types of people in the world. There are the winners. You see, the winners are the people who have made the decision that I already, I know how to get up on top. If I, if I make it and I fall off, I can get right back up and succeed. And those are like your Oprah Winfrey's, your Bill Gates, Michael Jordan's, et cetera. These are people who have achieved success beyond their wildest dreams. And then you have the second group. And this is the largest of the three. The second group are called the losers. You see, these are the people who have made the decision that there's nothing I can do about my life. This is my life and I have to just accept it for what it is. My family has lived in poverty for many generations before me and I can't be the first to make that difference. I can't change that. I just have to embrace it and, and let that be. And they've embraced the belief of being a loser. And then you have the third group and this is where a lot of our youth come in. The third group of the contenders. You see, I'm a diehard boxing fan. Anybody that knows me know, I, I'm Friday night fights on ESPN, I'm watching every pay-per-view fight, I'm watching, <laughs> I fly to Vegas for fights, I'm just a huge fan of boxing. And 
one thing about boxing that I've learned is every fighter that gets into boxing starts out as a contender. And their ultimate goal is to work the way up the ranks to get that title shot. And even when no one believes in them, they still believe that they can knock out the champion, regardless of what the Las Vegas betting says or, or the consumer or the fans or whoever. They believe that they can make a difference with one punch. And I think the greatest example of that is Rocky. I mean, Rocky would go 10, 11 rounds getting the brakes beat off of him. And then all of a sudden, he throw one good punch in the 12th round, and it changes everything. And it's the same in life. Our youth know that they're capable of doing greater works, and all they need is a shot. All they need is one shot to make a difference. And if, if they can get someone to give them that one shot, they can prove themselves. And, and that, that's where I was in my life. I had to realize that I was at a contender standpoint. I, I was at that stage of my life where I, I, all I needed was one opportunity. If I could get that one opportunity to prove myself and show that I'm capable of doing this, then I can make a difference. And I ended up getting that opportunity from a good friend of mine when I worked for a small tuxedo store at 17 years old. And during that two year span of me working there, I learned a lot about business and a lot about marketing, but I think that when, when I got that opportunity and that manager hired me, what, what he saw was giving me a job. What I saw was a life-changing experience. Literally a life-changing experience. And, and it, it's taken me places that I never thought it w I would ever go because of that, that, that one day where he said, Chris, you know what, I'm gonna hire you. I'm looking at some other candidates, but I'm gonna hire you. And that has literally changed my life. And, and it took me from being a contender to being a winner because then I, I learned how to win and I, I crossed over. That's the first step. We must discover who we are through our reality check. The second is called the dream. You see, it's important that on this journey we call life that you know what you're after. We must begin to see things that no one else can envision. We must see dreams and begin to have a, a vision that's greater than the eye vision. To, to be able to see these things that no one else can see. And, and what I've learned is on this journey, there's gonna be times where people won't believe. There's gonna be times where your friends and family aren't gonna support you. And they're gonna tell you that you're crazy for doing this. People told me I would never do this. People told me that speaking would never work for me. <laughs> I mean, I hope they can see me now. But I mean, these are the things that people told me. But what I, what I realized through this process was that God had given me the vision of being a speaker. He didn't give it to them. And if he wanted them to see it, he would have gave it to them too. But he didn't. He gave it to me. So the only person that needed to see it was me. And that's what I began to do. I began to every day envision myself doing this in front of audiences all over the place, all over the country, speaking for audiences, even though I had never spoken on a stage yet. I was already seeing it before it happened. So as you begin to dream and begin to think about what is it you want, it's important that you, you, you realize what the goal is. What, what is the dream that you're after? And begin to envision that on a regular basis. Paint pictures for yourself. One thing that I did to remind myself was I used to call and leave myself voicemails. <laughs> and, and what I would do is, on my voicemail, I would remind me of what I'm capable of when no one believed in my dream. And I mean, I give me an example, it would go something like, Hey, Chris, how you doing, man? You know, you're, you're, I just want you to know, bro, you're incredible, dude. You're, you're an amazing guy. Uh, uh, you're, you're, one day you're gonna be known around the world for being a motivational speaker, regardless of what everybody tells you. Don't listen to those around you, trust me. You're going to make it. If nobody else believes in you, just know that I believe in you, and it's gonna happen for you. And I remember I used to listen to these, and it would put tears to my eyes to know that I'm the only one that believes. And that's all that mattered to me at that time. So it's important that on this journey that you understand the dream. You must be able to dream about it when no one else can see it. The next ingredient I wanna give you is called the struggle. You see, during this stage of the, this is when things will get hard, uh, uh, during your struggle. And, and when, you, when you struggle, what I mean by that is, anytime you attempt to go after a goal or a dream, tough times are gonna happen. It's going to happen. And I think that one of the mistakes that we make as adults even with our youth is we tell our youth that you can be anything you want to be in life, which is very true. Don't get me wrong. They can be anything they choose, but we fail to tell them it's hard. It's hard. It's hard going after your goals and dreams. It's hard when people don't believe in you. It's not easy to wake up in the morning and go to school for young people. Adults, it's hard when you have marital problems, 
relationship problems. The bank account is in the negative. Your car broke down the day you start your new job. You lose your job. You're laid off. It's hard. I know this. And I think that one of the mistakes that we make is we, we, we see the goal. We see the goal ahead of us, and that's what we're focused on. We know what the dream is, and then all of a sudden we make the decision that, okay, we're here, but now we want to focus on the problem. And, and that's when something happens in our life, uh, a death in the family or, or maybe the kids get in trouble in school. or It's always something, all right? Always something that happens anytime you attempt to do something great. And it's like, it's like the deer in the headlights, okay? You know, the deer, he sees the headlight, but he's hypnotized by the movement of the oncoming vehicle and, and the lights, and he, he can't tear away from it for some reason. And eventually, he gets ran over. Or maybe like the bird who sees the snake and is mesmerized by the winding movements of the snake. If the bird would only look away for that long, he would live. He would break the spell and he would live. But he doesn't, and he's eventually gonna stand there and the snake gets closer and closer and closer, and then he consumes him whole. And many of us go every day and then we're consumed whole by life. Because we spend so much time looking at it and looking at it and talking about it and telling our friends about it, then you post it all over Facebook, then you put it all on Twitter, now you've told the world about it. And then before you even know it, you're consumed whole by your problems. When all you had to do was look away for that long, you would have broke the spell and lived. So it's important that on this journey through life, that you not allow fear to get in the way. You see, I'm a true believer that life stands for living in fear of excelling. Life's goal is to put you in a fear state of mind, people. Life's goal is to put you in a fear state of mind so that you don't want to go after your dreams and goals. Life knows that if you're focused on the goal and if I can distract this person with these problems, they're going to now focus on the problem and then they're going to be afraid to go back to pursue that dream or goal. So it's important that as you go through the struggle that you focus on the goal and you address the problem. You focus on the goal, you address the problem as needed, but you never focus on the problem. And this is how you survive through your struggles in life. The next ingredient I want to give you, and actually I want to take a step back. Uh, I, I, I kind of skipped over a couple. Um, and I'm only going back because I heard one of the students mention, I think it was David, he mentioned this one. During these times when you, when you run into these challenges and you run into these hard times, I've learned there's a phrase that you can always hold to be true no matter what happens. There's one phrase that carries so much power that you can always hold to be true, regardless of what happens to you in life. And the phrase is, it's possible. It's possible. It's possible that you can live your dreams. It's possible that you can achieve your goals. No matter what happens, it's still possible. No matter how bad life gets, no matter how bad the bank account looks on paper, it's still possible that you can change it. It's still possible. And that was the belief that I had to take on as I went through life, that even though I'm not known as a speaker, even though no one has ever heard of me, it's possible that I can become known. It's possible that one day I'm gonna impact thousands of lives. It's possible that one day I'm gonna travel the country and speak at events. It's possible. There's others that's doing it, so why can't I do it? I found examples of those who were doing it and I used them as my it's possible. That if they can do it, I can do it. So it's important that on this journey you hold on to the belief of what's truly possible for your life. The next ingredient I want to give you um, is probably, in my opinion, one of the most important ingredients in the book. And the ingredient is you must have faith. You see, there's going to come a time in your lives where all the motivation in the world cannot help you. There's going to come a time where there's nothing that we can say as friends, family, co-workers, relatives, whatever. There's nothing that we can say that's going to lift you out of the hole that you've fallen into. And that's when you have to lean on a power much greater than yourself and find the strength to keep going when you don't think you have it anymore. And I think that what you'll realize is as you go through this journey and as you read the book even, you're going to realize that faith is what's gotten you to where you are. Faith is what has carried you through this journey the whole time, and you just didn't even realize it at that point. And the next ingredient that I want to give you uh, is the victory. I see that. 
That's my wife right there. She's smiling. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> so anyways, let's talk about the victory. The victory is, is what you've done all this for. This is what you've put all the hard work in for. It's to get to that point where you can say, I did it. I made it. I've achieved this goal. And, and I'll be honest with you, and I don't say this to brag, but I've had a lot of victories in my life. I've achieved a lot of goals, a lot of dreams have come true for me. But the biggest goal that I've ever achieved was one that I shared with my wife. You see, her dream, when I met her, she, she always told me how she wants to go to Tokyo, Japan one day, and she was studying, studying Japanese in school in, at Grand Valley, and of course as a college student, I don't think she could afford to go at that time. But I remembered it, that that's what she told me she wanted to do one day. And so we eventually dated for a few years and then we got married. And, and I remember on our, our first anniversary, we went out to dinner, I believe, right? We, yeah, we went out to dinner like before time, a few months early. And uh, during that time we were having dinner, I'm not gonna tell you what I said, but I did get a little smooth. So, uh, you know, said some sweet things to her. Put my Johnny Romance coat on and just kind of mumbled some things. And I said, here, check this out. And I slid a piece of paper across the table to her. She said, what is it? I said, just open it. And she opened it, and it was an itinerary for seven days and six nights stay in Tokyo, Japan. One of the finest hotels in downtown Tokyo. And I remember when we got to Tokyo, we did anything that she wanted to do. We visited every museum that she picked out, and, and we, aquariums of her right, and we tried all types of, well, I say she tried all types of exotic foods, and, <laughs> and I just watched most of the time <laughs> until I could find a McDonald's, and then that's where I ate at, but. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of octopus spaghetti, I'm sorry, and squid, and I just can't do it. But the reason I chose this photo is we took a tour of the city with, with one, you know, a, a tourist little setup they had, and this is one of the photos that was taken of us at dinner overlooking the city. And the reason this victory was so important for, for her is because it was a dream come true. But for me, it was another life-changing experience. See, what you have to understand is, when you look at what statistics say about African-American men, I'm not supposed to be doing this. I'm not supposed to be traveling the world, 13 hour flight to Tokyo, then another hour flight to our, or a ride on the train to our hotel to enjoy life and not have to worry about anything. That's this, it's, it's, it's not supposed to be possible for us to do that. And so it was important for me to prove that point that we're capable, it's possible. And, that, and that's why this, this was so important for me. And you see, she's smiling, so she obviously had a good time. But, uh, <laughs> so this is, that, this is, for me, been one of my biggest victories. And, and she might kill me for saying this, but we actually have another victory. We just found out that we're gonna be having our first child. Oh. So. <laughs> So I'm very excited about that, that I'm gonna get an opportunity to be a father now and, and, and show my son or daughter the things that I didn't know at that age and, and give them a life that was better than the one that I had. At least that's the goal. And so that is, for me has been, been my biggest victory. And, and the last ingredient that I wanna give you is called significance. You see, significance is, is those things that we do to help others. The only thing that I ask after you read the book is that you pay it forward. Share it with someone else. Share with others your experience, what you've learned, how you got through your difficult times. How did you get over the hump? Shorten their learning curve. I, I consistently now, all year long, I get an opportunity to, to meet thousands of youth and talk with thousands of youth at my different events. I mean, people who are, are enjoying my book and, and it's, it's, it's life changing and it's very humbling to know that I've, been, I've had the opportunity to make such an impact on so many people when at one point in my life, I never thought this was possible for me. And now to be able to do these things that I do now and, and, and help so many through my own personal story has is, is literally been life-changing. Speaking in front of, I mean, this was a group of almost 500 students in Chicago. It's life-changing. And they've, they've had me there, I think, two straight years now for this event. I mean, for me, this is, this is what it's about. This is what it's about. And the reason why... I'm so passionate about helping our youth is because I remember a point in my life where I was like this and I didn't know. I didn't know. 
And I thought I knew. That's the crazy part. I thought I knew, but I really didn't know. And so it's important for me that I am able to go back and share with others how I did it. This photo here is from our first book signing. Uh, it, it was very exciting and it's very humbling to know that I was able to create something of tangible value that I could deliver to others and people were willing to line up and stand in line 20, 30 minutes to shake hands with me and meet me. I'm just a poor kid from the inner city. <laughs> I mean, it's, that's how I looked at it. And, and this is a, from a recent event that I just did over at Ottawa Hills where I got a chance to work with a small group of business students and share with them things that I've done to become an entrepreneur and how I've achieved my success in business. So I guess that closes it up for me with that photo right there, right? <laughs> I forgot how many pictures I put in there. <laughs> so I want to leave you with one last thing. You can see that was not, that was not planned, right? <laughs> One last thing I want to leave you, and, and it's a poem that I wrote called To Live Your Dreams, which you'll find at the very back of the book. It's a poem that I've practically become known by um, because of its message. To live your dreams, you'll be willing to fight for it. Make steps every day and night for it. Be willing to give up time and sleep at night for it. Have patience, work hard, and do more than just try for it. Remember, Martin had a dream and he was willing to die for it. You have to believe and have dreams at night about it. Feel your life is just useless and incomplete without it. Be willing to take a setback to reach it. And know that others before you have achieved it. Know in your heart that you cannot be defeated. Use all your strength, skills, and prepare to take action. And not reaching your goal is never an option. Stay moving forward towards your goal until you hit it. And I promise through the power of God, you'll get it. Thank you. Did I know it? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Christopher Mathis, I don't know where you're going, but um, you need to come back up here. So he doesn't know that I'm getting ready to do this now, but um, we have time for maybe five questions from the audience. So if you all have any questions uh, that you want to ask Chris, um, please raise your hand and he'll answer those for you. I can't see the light in my eye, so yes. Yes, I was. Yep, I, I, my family was there till 2002, I want to say. I was going to ask you if you had a mic. You have the questions, comments, thoughts, anything? You say you graduated from Grand. You say you graduated from Grand Rapids Christian. No, Grand Rapids Central. Oh, I was going to say Grand Rapids. Christian. Yep, Grand Rapids okay. Central. Questions, comments, thoughts, anything. Love, message in the book. Yeah, comments are great. Questions about the book, if you haven't already read it. My name, I want to introduce myself. My name is Brooke Davis, and I'm a social worker from Wyoming Public Schools. And these are, we have an African American Leadership Academy. Nice. And these are our girls from the academy. And Glenda Hayton happened to email me your description. And we've been trying to get the girls in Wyoming out in the community and doing things. And so we just sent a little flyer to our girls, and they came to enjoy listening to you wow. tonight. Um, and it is very inspirational. Um, they work very hard, and their parents work very hard, and they are committed to doing this every single week. So I'm very proud of them. So I wanted to give them some acknowledgement. Absolutely. That. Absolutely. And I'm very proud of your accomplishments as well and your message to them. One of the girls said, well, can I ask him to come to Wyoming? So now <laughs> this is your personal invitation to visit us at the junior high. We Absolutely. have a thousand students um, and we would like to get the book out to them too um, and do some book studies. Glenda was very gracious. She shares everything with me. So I'm sharing in her success <laughs> today. But I wanted to make sure my acknowledge my students. Students, stand up for a second so Chris can see you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate it. I really do appreciate it. So thank, thank you, Chris and Shannon. <laughs> Any of the young people here would like to make a comment or a question to Chris? In the back. Oh, in the back. Oh, let me get you, you first, and here, then I'll go to you. one in the back. Um, Stand up. Stand up. 
Considering the life you had before, do you, are you happy with the life you have now? Absolutely, absolutely. Because I live a life now where, well, let me put it this way. At one point, I was very passionate about what I did. I was very passionate about marketing and, and, and working in that line of business. And then I lost my passion for it because I wasn't doing it because I loved it anymore. I was doing it because the company wanted to make more money. And so I, in 2010, I walked away. And, and I've been doing this ever since. And I can honestly say I'm, I've, I've never been happier with what I've chosen as a career. Really am. Very happy. Hi. Hello. My name is Teresa Folden. And I work at a teen parent center. Mm -hmm. And you gave our girls hope. Wow. And we just want to thank you for coming and wow. sharing your story with us. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. I appreciate that. Anyone else? Questions? Comments? All right. Well, thank you so much for being such an attentive audience. What we're going to do now is... We are going to... Oh, we got to give these books away. I forgot. Give a couple books away. Can I have um, the munchkin, please, in the back? Come on up. She's going to draw two tickets. And actually bring two books with you, munchkin. Give her two books. Do we have a Sharpie or an ink pen up here? Um, no, we have some in the back. Okay, I'll just sign it back there. She said, forget the steps. Yeah. <laughs> this is Sydney Monet Foss. <laughs> She's in Young Fives. She's a five-year-old. Okay. <laughs> Chris. Thank you. Ticket number 376-172. Seven six one eight zero. All right. <laughs> there you go, sir. Let's do one more. One more? Okay. One we'll, more. We'll do one more. Thank you. The last book will go to three seven six one eight four. <laughs> All right, come on up. Well, actually, you're, yep, go, go, to the, go to the back table there, the back, yep, book sales table, and they have your copy there for you. Thank you so much for coming. A couple of other um, things we would like to say. We would like to thank GRCC for videotaping tonight's uh, event. Um, it will air on cable, Comcast Cable Channel 27. Uh, would also like to thank Michael Moore of the City of Grand Rapids for creating this poster for us. Um, another round of applause for all of the young people that showed up tonight. So uh, we also would like to make a quick announcement about KidSpeak. Lynn uh, mentioned that a little earlier um, in the program. KidSpeak is April 26th, which is a Friday. Um, it's an annual forum where young people speak about issues that affect them. Uh, we'll have two hours worth of young people speaking. So please come out. Um, if you want to know any more information about that, we have some uh, registration forms in the back. Or you can go to our website, which is grchildren.us. That's grchildren.us for Kids Speak. Very unique uh, opportunity for young people to speak directly to legislators, community leaders, people that make decisions on their behalf. Also, the LEAD program. Chris um, has actually spoken at um, every one of our cohorts for our LEAD program, which is a civic engagement, leadership, and employment program. If you know of any young person that lives in the city of Grand Rapids, between the ages of 15 and 21 that's looking for a job. We have our LEAD program, which will start the week after um, school lets out for the summer, two and a half weeks of training, and then you're eligible for a job at one of the companies that have enrolled in the Mayor's 50 campaign. So thank you all for coming. Um, really appreciate 
you being here. We've got books for sale in the back. We're also gonna be signing some books. Please tell your friends and family about the book and where it can be purchased, chrismathis.com um, or amazon.com as well. So thank you so much. And we've got some more instructions over here um, to the left, to the right. I Go just, on. I wanna remind you guys, the book sale area is on the right.